amazing installation. Even until nowadays, you look at it, it was just, wow. You're so ahead of your time. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know how to react to this, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I think people like it when I show it in Denmark. And but I mean, unfortunately, there's not no, nothing in Hong Kong that want to show this piece, so it just sank into history. So yeah, I'm I'm glad that it, it comes out again, even though it looks a little bit different from. I mean, uh, the model change. Right? We changed the model. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks, thank you. So yes, that's not how yeah. it's back to it's much a uh, smaller size of it. A smaller size. Yeah, it looks thinner, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And so let's talk about the recycling cinema. Mm -hmm. So that piece was commissioned for the Venice Biennale. Mm -hmm. It started with the I think it's not commissioned. I, I think we, I built this piece before they announced the Venice Biennale. Not the installation, but the single channel. Both of them are. Both of them. I, I did it before. Yeah. So can you tell us more of the process behind this this iconic, which has now become this iconic piece of your work? I I have the I mean I bought a pen head um, many years ago before I my office little touch moved to Oil Street and I was uh, keeping it in my collection and I don't know what to do with this pen automatic pen head and uh, I have uh, idea that okay people are saying uh, if you are doing a moving image don't do a pen again and again. And I think, oh, really? And uh, can I do do it? But with some uh, reason behind, so I can justify why I'm doing it. So if I have to justify why I am doing this pen, the most um, the most appropriate camera that is doing that would be a surveillance camera. So I'm thinking, it, what if my camera is a surveillance camera? And what is the surveillance camera is looking for? What what kind of image that the surveillance camera would fall, fall in love with. And you know, so I'm I'm putting myself as a camera, like the camera eye, the movie camera eye, and then uh, so I I developed this um, uh, one channel piece and then I find out when I work on the editing, I find out that my whole body if I, I if I put uh, in reverse of the camera, I put the projector on it. So the projector is on the uh, pan hat and it's panning. So uh, on that space, on that um, projection space, I realized that my body is actually turning while my eyes is turning the other um, direction. So I'm suddenly I feel that the vision is so special that I, it's not just my eye, it's my brain and my whole body, and it, I think I'm, I'm, I have a different uh, uh, interpretation about vision and image. So that's why the I always say that even though they have the same name, we suffer in cinema, but actually they talk about different things, and it's, it's, yeah, they are, are talking really about different things. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm doing a, the reason why I'm not interested in the in the screen is because I always think that the screen is only good for a a thin image, like the wall. So you can, if you go to she moves, you see which is the the white curtain. Yeah, the white curtain piece. One that in it's, it's just curtain, a wall, exactly. so there is uh, no depth to the wall, but you can see the texture and you can see. The image on the wall, and I always think that if you are using a screen, you cannot use the space behind it. So you just use you have to film a wall. So that is how that piece come about. I think Travis also helped me with that piece. I forgot. I mean, there are people helping helping me with uh, my work. Actually, it sounds like I always tell people I am working alone, but actually, there are, yeah, there are friends. I'm very grateful to them. Can you tell people about the making process of She Moves, as you told me the other day, and I found it was just fascinating. So She Moves was in this black, big curtain. Inside there is a small room that you can see the white curtains. We try to create a window yeah, situation. Right. You can see this beautiful uh, raindrop. It's water, water drop dresses yes. falling down. And with the soundtracks, it's from Vera Lynn's post award to wow. soundtrack. It's very popular. Yeah. It's a song from the Second World War, and kind of like 
呃、uh, ，the Shanghai 我等这里回来。The idea, I mean the this the idea is the same. Like I、uh, I'm waiting for you to come back. And um so actually okay from the very beginning is um. I don't have the song. From the very beginning, I have the wall. I want to do something with the wall, and the first thing that comes to my mind is a crying wall, obviously,、uh, because I know there is a crying wall. Crying, crying wall.、Um, I think there is some, uh, uh, some, uh, some tourist spots, tourist place in in Israel. Is it? Is it called crying wall? Yes. And so, and and I I've never been to that place, but I I think yeah. War can cry and city can cry. I mean, there's what people can cry, you know. And so for crying war, if it's outside, it would be raining. So I have to make it indoor. <laughs> so I have to make an indoor war、uh, with you know crying. And、um, so I have people helping me with the water and moving the water around, so to produce the wave. And I rent a very strong light, 800 watts light. Shine. I mean, try to explore what kind of angle would be great for the、uh, reflection and also the shadows, and、um, and so I I made the、uh, all the visual on one night, actually at the hospital, <laughs> and、um, so and、yeah. there's a lot of hospital elements in our yes、um, show wheelchair,、uh, but I mean hospital always remind me of、um, injury and war and all that. I mean, so that's a good place actually, and. Um, so when I do the editing, I need something to to produce that kind of like、uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> stream of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> so I have this.、Um, Image in my mind that if if someone wants to look at this, this、uh, video, they have to sit in a room and just project from their mind, from their head, directly out what they are thinking. And also,、uh, what they are thinking is part of what they、uh, are looking. Also, they may be looking at the wall in the room, but they are thinking raining or crying. So it's a merge of all these things together. So the the installation is to、uh, I I try to make it、uh, back to the original idea of、uh, a person's mind. So I I imagine the person who is sitting on the chair now has this. You have to、um, reverse the feeling back to you, and to think that okay, you are sitting in your own room, and then you have this emotion. And that piece kind of surface transition of in that section, so we put like the two big like two degrees jump to three that way, and then also the very important piece like Son of the Goddess.、Um, can you tell a little more about Son of the Goddess? That was a year after you got the grant of ACC. Yeah, I go to I, New York. I went to New York for the. I mean, the, because of the grants, I went to New York for a year. Oh no, 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 for half a year, and then I make this、uh, work. Majority of this editing is in New York,、um, but before I actually before I go to New York, I already formulate most of the ideas of the video, and so I carry most of like the Cantonese opera footage, and I carry those those footage to New York to do the editing, and add in. I add in the、uh, MTR, I'm not MTR, the subway,、uh, the subway、uh, scene in the in the video, and also the bathing, the, the yeah, the bathing scene, yeah. So these are add in in New York. The other are from Hong Kong, and I think I don't know. It, it comes so natural because I was so touched by these、um, <coughs> words that Bach、um, Shuxin the. A Cantonese opera singer the,、uh, who usually play the female role.、Um, she said、uh, to the male who the male role who is played by another woman that she works for many years. And when the male、um, opera singer uh, uh, 
uh, die when she died, and the female, her partner, uh, said, uh, I can die a hundred times to bring, I want to bring you back. And that is very touching. So, because they are off screen lovers, but. I know one said that. No one, but they say it. No one really. But I don't care whether they're lovers. I just want to portray their story. I mean, the, yeah. And uh, so even if they come and sue me saying that they are lovers, I, I, think, I don't care. But I mentioned that because that's, people say that's the most uh, uh, works about gender politics, about you know, the gaynessness. Because also that was producing that year, that was the year when Hong Kong this criminalized the homosexual. So that's kind of, people associate that with you because it has the most uh, gender politics, strong political tension of the work you have. Because most of your works are not. Because you don't work with narratives. So lots of people want to ask, uh, how does your work relate to the politics in Hong Kong? What's that? Because that's probably the piece has the most uh, categorized, I guess. I don't think that is the most you, political I work, I think. Well, that is, I would say, the most narrative work I, I produce. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously people would, would point to TV games of the year to, to say that is the most political work. But, I mean, I'm more interested in game, in narrative, and, yeah. I've never worked before, like a narrative structure, like, like um, experiment with history, well, you can call the whole piece experimental history, or you can, it actually is based on uh, uh, location, it's a location based on mental reality, so I also have ideas about like speculative geography, which I put into the, the work, and which I think is really things that I, I don't know, I'm very curious, and I'm very happy that I have this chance to start researching on areas that I really don't know. So in the backdrop, we produce this wallpaper, which is a Google map, and on top of it, which is the line is called Jane Jinker's line, mm -hmm. which is alongside, maybe you should say in companies, right? The, the line actually is part of the Jane Jinker's line. The Jane Jinker's line is uh, separating Hong Kong uh, Peninsula, the Kowloon Peninsula, to um, separate from the new territory. So it's a line across the peninsula, and starting from Kwai Chung to the other end, uh, Saigon. So it's a really long line, a defense line. And we feature only the Golden Mountain area. Uh, you see the uh, Google image of the green, the green mountain uh, image is the uh, Golden Mountain where all the monkeys are. There's another story about the monkeys. But and, um, what we are presenting now is the uh, only the gold, Golden Mountain um, in that location because it's a location specific. So if you take the your the AR um, apps to that location, you will see the spaceship or the city ship uh, floating on top. And actually, the words are not in that location. The words should be in another pillbox. Uh, I mean, the, the map, the Oxford Street, and the, all these uh, street, London Street names are, for, are in the golden. Cannot hear. Cannot hear you. 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 <laughs> Sorry, um, so I can't Is it better now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it better. Hi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> okay, so what you see uh, the, on the map is really uh, a tunnel where they, they put some tunnel and pillbox. Uh, in the Golden Hill, Golden Mountain. Um, that is, the, the London map is uh, on, we try to overlap the London map of the Jean Jenkins line onto the real position in Google, on Google. And so that is actually underneath the mountain. I mean, it's a tunnel, it's a tunnel. And in the AR, AR world, we have um, objects flowing above this, uh, 
on the, in the sky, we have objects that is uh, just, just climb back from the sea, and then uh, we are uh, we try to speak uh, the Hong Kong history in a vertical way. Uh, the, the sea, uh, the, the sky, and the sea and the land. I mean, uh, in that way. So another one is from the iPad. So people can take out their iPad, and then you will look at there's strains of words flying. It's, they says I don't have time to do with fear, which is inspired by earlier this year there is a bomb found out in the in one side. We actually put the news clipping on the timeline. So this a whole this is still working uh, in the developing process. I think this is new approach that Alan was trying to look at with the city's mythology, how you know through the development technology how it can help us to understand the city that we are living in, and it's just through the mythology. And we don't know what this word will, I'm very curious about what words just will continually happen. And Alan had this crazy idea, this eternity. It's a 1,000 and one yeah. nice stories. Yeah, because there are so many stories in Hong Kong. I mean, part of this uh, true story, part of them are like from movies, uh, or part of them are just folklore that you hear people talking about. In you know your relatives or your uh, old grandpa uh, story. So uh, I have I I've, I've been collecting a lot of stories, but mostly are uh, from uh, internet actually, mostly from internet and from movies actually. Yeah. And so I'm thinking of doing this one thousand and one night story story book, yeah. <laughs> and uh, because. The original or the my my impression of the one thousand and one night is uh, you have to tell one thousand and one nights in order to keep you yourself alive because if you stop talking about your own story you will be dead you will be killed so I have this idea maybe I should I have probably don't have I want to have more time so I I have to tell my own story <laughs> in order not to be killed. Yeah, you <laughs> um, So I want to open question to the floor and see. Just actually asking that question so that we can hear your answer in Hong Kong. Um, which is um, on you know, how yes. you having been working with radiology and hospital in with uh, radiology for so long. How has that shaped um, how you view and work with abstraction? You really want to want me to answer this? I really want to. I mean, uh, yeah. This I think. The journalists have asked this question many, many times, and I gave them already the answer. But okay, I try to make it short. I mean, I give them at the end very simple conclusion: is uh, radiology lead me to understand the production of an image, but also the interpretation of an image, and I start from there to understand what kind of image. What what is an image? What do image wants? I mean, that is so uh, visual culture questions that I'm asking, but it's still very true for me because uh, an image is never real for me. Sometimes it's just, uh, I, I can only speculate there is something true behind the image. So that is always my attitude towards uh, working with moving image or still image. And this lead me to a lot of uh, curiosity in the production, in the um, in the final um, context. For example, I, I told you about the the space that I'm using, how I use it with the space. That is also um, a factor that will change how you view it, view the image. Uh, Big Light G, I deliberately made a game for myself is to keep all the image. I, I don't change the image, I keep it the same for all the installation, but the content, the context change. And, and that's why image is really not important at all. Yes, so that is from my training of production and, and I mean, because when you look at an X-ray image, people are always saying, "Okay, there's a shadow there. So what is that? <laughs> okay. uh, maybe there's nothing. There's nothing there. But, that, but you, 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 you definitely, oh, everyone see the shadow, right? But yeah, it can be nothing. So that is 
or my my personal take to all the image in the world is like I, I don't believe I mean I I don't believe so much I mean, on the image. More and more um, diversify in uh, the artistic production are using a lot of multimedia and a lot of different media actually. New media also, but I'm also uh, think, think the world, the art world, maybe trying to catch up with the, um, the uh, bigger world. <laughs> the, yeah, because um, I think Hong Kong is trying to catch up uh, to the art market now. But I think the uh, Hong Kong artists also need to catch up with the, the world that is bigger than our market. And that is what I am trying to work on now. Yeah. It's great to see um, this exhibition, but, yeah, to see all your work in one place. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to see if you could talk a little bit more about, I guess you're not just an artist, you're also a curator and founder of Videotage, there's a long history to that, and maybe how, uh, I guess, the you know, starting off with a very new kind of technology and art and building an audience through videotage and like showing people how to exhibit this kind of work and, you know, learn about how to appreciate this kind of work and how you've built up um, a kind of, you know, festivals around that and how you see your role at whether it's primarily an artist or curator, organizer or, or also um, how Hong Kong has changed over the years in terms of, I guess, appreciating or receiving, understanding uh, this kind of work that you're, you're doing and promoting. I, I think start from the very beginning when I first start video touch, I think I'm a gardener. I'm just planting seeds, I mean, I'm just waiting for the flower to grow. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know whether I'm taking such a professional role as a curator or as an artist. I, I, I usually just see myself as a um, facilitator. Yeah. Um, my organizing power is not that good, so I'm not an organizer. <laughs> I'm a facilitator, and yeah, so that's it. Highly present in your other body of work. I have a lot of canned music, um, a bit too much, I know, uh, but in those times I, because most of the video I did uh, basically is for my own pleasure. She did a lovely show, I want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because it's, it's, it's not intent to be shown in a museum or in a gallery, it's just like my hobbies, okay, I, even though I don't like this word, but I mean, yeah, as a, as a garden, I think I would like to plant more. <laughs> but um, sound, yes, sound is so important for me. Uh, I I didn't become a video artist from day one. I actually I'm a music fan. I really go to not HMV. I don't remember the, the name of the of the store. But I mean, like if I'm earning eight thousand dollar. I would really spend six thousand buy CD. So that is how I, I like every day. If I don't have any like things to do afterward, I would just go to the record store. Anyway, I would just get two bags of CD or DVD and then go home. So I buy them really okay. <laughs> I mean, some of them are still in in the plastic bag. <laughs> you can still see those in the in she in the big like you. A lot of them are still in plastic bag, but um, but I really uh, feel that I I gain so much from just not just buying, but I gain so much into a few artists that I really love. I gain like I mean I um, Laurie Anderson, uh, Philip Glass. I mean those really prominent in modern music. Uh, but Stockhausen, like the first video that I made uh, in the installation in French, the first one called The Disenchantment of Statue, uh, I, I try to 
yeah, try to understand why stop person is using noise and all that. I mean, yeah. So basically, music is my muse, not not image. As I said, I mean, image. I don't believe in image, and you know, so I um, <coughs> music guide me to a lot of thinking, especially uh, create create my own work. My I mean the. The reason why I take the image is because of the music. So music is very important. It's part of the the context. It's a very important content. And blue is also like that. Blue, I is originally a video diary that I talk about myself. I mean, like I have some X-ray image. I have my replica, and I have all that image that I have. Uh, yeah, just ordinary life. But suddenly, because 1989 and the June 4th incident, and then uh, the whole world turned upside down, so I stopped making that movie, uh, that video, and then um, it becomes something else that I want to um, talk about June 4th. And it's not just about my biography, it's not, not my video diary, it becomes something bigger like a diary for many Hong Kong people or a diary for uh, 1989, something like that. So that's why I'm using uh, um, the, the CD is called Don't Learn Music, I forgot the artist. You don't know? Very different from this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, uh, so the song, is named, the name of the song is called uh, Biography, which I think is just right for my video diary. And the only lyrics in the, in the song is dying, 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 dying. So that is, I think, very precisely what I need for the, for the soundtrack. But you, actually, you can see a lot of dying here and there. <laughs> There's just a small comment about this project, possible project with uh, a thousand and one nights, uh, because I've worked on this uh, this this huge work itself. Uh, it, the thousand and one nights, uh, I think, yes, it's uh, supposed to be uh, about an art narrating act that saves you from being killed, that of Shahrazad. But uh, I think uh, if one wants to get close to a thousand and one nights, there's, uh, it would, um, the product has also to produce what the thousand and one nights has produced with it, with, with, which is this notion that if you read a thousand and one nights, you will die. That if you read the whole book in its entirety, you will die. And so it's not, I think this is the difficulty of producing something like the thousand and one nights. I, I narrate not to die, but if someone reads the whole narration, they end up dying. Oh, so that's why I die, I die. <laughs> 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 Alright, thanks so much um, for coming and please pick up